Faro, Wikipedia article audio. Faro or slash f air. O slash, Coptic, Pharaoh is the common title of the monarchs of ancient Egypt from the First Dynasty until the annexation of Egypt by the Roman Empire in 30 BCE, although the actual term Pharaoh was not used contemporaneously for a ruler until circa 1200 BCE. In the early dynasty, ancient Egyptian kings used to have up to three titles, the Horus, the Niso Abedi, and the Nedi name. The Golden Horus and Nomen and Prenomen titles were later added. Etymology In Egyptian society, religion was central to everyday life. One of the roles of the pharaoh was as an intermediary between the gods and the people. The pharaoh thus deputized for the gods, his role was both a civil and religious administrator. He owned all of the land in Egypt, enacted laws, collected taxes, and defended Egypt from invaders as the commander-in-chief of the army. Religiously, the pharaoh officiated over religious ceremonies and chose the sites of new temples. He was responsible for maintaining mot, or balance, and justice, and part of this included going to war when necessary to defend the country or attacking others when it was believed that this would contribute to mot, such as to obtain resources. During the early days prior to the unity of the lower and upper kingdoms of ancient Egypt, Adishrit, the Red Crown, was a representation the kingdom of lower Egypt, while the hot jet, a white crown, was worn by the kings of the Kingdom of Upper Egypt. After the unification of both kingdoms into one united Egypt, the Chant, the combination of both the red and white crowns was the official crown of kings. With time new headdresses were introduced during different dynasties like Kot, Nemes, Atef, Hemam, and Keprish. At times, it was depicted that a combination of these headdresses or crowns would be worn together. Regalia The word pharaoh ultimately derives from the Egyptian compound PR3 Great House, written with the two bilateral hieroglyphs PR House and Three Column, here meaning great or high. It was used only in larger phrases such as SMR PR3 Courtier of the High House with specific reference to the buildings of the court or palace. From the 12th dynasty onward, the word appears in a wish formula Great House, may it live, prosper, and be in health, but again only with reference to the royal palace and not the person. Scepters and Staves During the reign of Thutmose III in the New Kingdom, after the foreign rule of the Hyksos during the Second Intermediate Period, Pharaoh became the form of address for a person who was king. The Ureus The earliest instance where PR3 is used specifically to address the ruler is in a letter to Amenhotep IV, who reigned circa 1353-1336 BCE, which is addressed to Pharaoh, all life, prosperity, and health. During the 18th dynasty the title pharaoh was employed as a reverential designation of the ruler. About the late 21st dynasty, however, instead of being used alone as before, it began to be added to the other titles before the ruler's name, and from the 25th dynasty it was, at least in ordinary usage, the only epithet prefixed to the royal appellative. Crowns and Headdresses From the 19th dynasty onward PR3 on its own was used as regularly as M, Majesty. The term, therefore, evolved from a word specifically referring to a building to a respectful designation for the ruler, particularly by the 22nd dynasty and 23rd dynasty. Dishraet For instance, the first dated appearance of the title pharaoh being attached to a ruler's name occurs in year 17 of Siamon on a fragment from the Karnak priestly annals. Here, 
an induction of an individual to the Amun priesthood is dated specifically to the reign of Pharaoh Siamun. This new practice was continued under his successor Sisens II and the 22nd dynasty kings. For instance, the large Dakla Stila is specifically dated to year 5 of King Pharaoh Shoshenk, beloved of Amun, whom all Egyptologists concur with Shoshenk I the founder of the 22nd dynasty including Alan Gardner in his original 1933 publication of this Stila. Shoshenkai was the second successor of Siamun. Meanwhile, the old custom of referring to the sovereign simply as PR3 continued in traditional Egyptian narratives. By this time, the late Egyptian word is reconstructed to have been pronounced asterisk whence Herodotus derived the name of one of the Egyptian kings, Phi Epsilon Rho Omega Nu. In the Old Testament of the Bible, the title also occurs as, from that, Septuagint Phi Alpha Rho Alpha Phara and then late Latin Phara, both N stem nouns. The Quran likewise spells it Fur on with N. Interestingly, the Arabic combines the original pharyngeal ion sound from Egyptian, along with the N ending from Greek. Hejet. Chant. Kot. Names. English at first spelt it Pharaoh, but the King James Bible revived Pharaoh with H from the Hebrew. Meanwhile in Egypt itself, asterisk evolved into Sahidic Coptic Pero and then Ro. Other notable epithets, NSW is translated to King, ITY for Monarch or Sovereign, NB for Lord, and Heka for Ruler. Scepters and staves were a general sign of authority in ancient Egypt. One of the earliest royal scepters was discovered in the tomb of Khasakemwai in Abydos. Kings were also known to carry a staff, and Pharaoh Anjib is shown on stone vessels carrying a so-called MKS staff. The scepter with the longest history seems to be the Heka scepter, sometimes described as the shepherd's crook. The earliest examples of this piece of regalia dates to pre-dynastic times. A scepter was found in a tomb at Abydos that dates to the late Nakata period. Another scepter associated with the king is the Was scepter. This is a long staff mounted with an animal head. The earliest known depictions of the Was scepter date to the First Dynasty. The Was scepter is shown in the hands of both kings and deities. The flail later was closely related to the Heka scepter, but in early representations the king was also depicted solely with the flail, as shown in a late pre-dynastic knife handle which is now in the Metropolitan Museum, and on the Narmer mace head. The earliest evidence known of the Urias a rearing cobra is from the reign of Den from the First Dynasty. The cobra supposedly protected the pharaoh by spitting fire at its enemies. The Red Crown of Lower Egypt, the Dishrit Crown, dates back to pre-dynastic times. A red crown has been found on a pottery shard from Nakata, and later, King Narmer is shown wearing the red crown on both the Narmer mace head and the Narmer palette. The White Crown of Upper Egypt, the Hejet Crown, was worn in the pre-dynastic period by King Scorpion, and, later, by Narmer. This is the combination of the Dishrit and Hejet crowns into a double crown, called the Chint crown. It is first documented in the middle of the First Dynasty. The earliest depiction may date to the reign of Jet, and is otherwise surely attested during the reign of Den. The cot headdress consists of a kind of kerchief whose end is tied similarly to a ponytail. The earliest depictions of the cot headdress comes from the reign of Den, but is not found again until the reign of Djoser. The Nimes headdress dates from the time of Djoser. It is the most common type of crown that has been depicted throughout Pharaonic Egypt. 
Any other type of crown, apart from the cot head dress, has been commonly depicted on top of the Nemes. The statue from his Sirdab in Saqqara shows the king wearing the Nemes head dress. Osiris is shown to wear the Atef crown, which is an elaborate heat jet with feathers and discs. Depictions of pharaohs wearing the Atef crown originate from the Old Kingdom. The Hemam crown is usually depicted on top of Nemes, Chant, or Dishrit crowns. It is an ornate triple Atef with corkscrew sheep horns and usually two Urii. The usage of this crown begins during the early 18th dynasty of Egypt. Also called the Blue Crown, the Keprish crown has been depicted since the New Kingdom. Egyptologist Bob Breyer has noted that despite their widespread depiction in royal portraits, no ancient Egyptian crown has ever been discovered. Tutankhamun's tomb, discovered largely intact, did contain such regalia as his crook and flail, but no crown was found, however, among the funerary equipment. Diadems have been discovered. It is presumed that crowns would have been believed to have magical properties. Breyer's speculation is that crowns were religious or state items, so a dead pharaoh likely could not retain a crown as a personal possession. The crowns may have been passed along to the successor. During the early dynastic period kings had three titles. The Horus name is the oldest and dates to the late pre-dynastic period. The Nisuabidi name was added during the first dynasty. The Nedi name was first introduced toward the end of the first dynasty. The Golden Falcon name is not well understood. The Prenomen and Nomen were introduced later and are traditionally enclosed in a cartouche. By the Middle Kingdom, the official titulary of the ruler consisted of five names. Horus, Nedi, Golden Horus, Nomen, and Prenomen for some rulers, only one or two of them may be known. The Nisuabidi name, also known as Prenomen, was one of the new developments from the reign of Den. The name would follow the glyphs for the Asej and the B. The title is usually translated as King of Upper and Lower Egypt. The NSW Bidi name may have been the birth name of the king. It was often the name by which kings were recorded in the later annals and king lists. The Horus name was adopted by the king, when taking the throne. The name was written within a square frame representing the palace, named Aserak. The earliest known example of Aserak dates to the reign of King Ka, before the first dynasty. The Horus name of several early kings expresses a relationship with Horus. Aha refers to Horus the fighter, Jer refers to Horus the strong, etc. Later kings express ideals of kingship in their Horus names. Khasakemwai refers to Horus, the two powers are at peace, while Nabur refers to Horus, Lord of the Sun. The earliest example of a Nedi name comes from the reign of King Aha from the First Dynasty. The title links the king with the goddesses of Upper and Lower Egypt Nekbet and Wajet. The title is preceded by the vulture and the cobra standing on a basket. The Golden Horus or Golden Falcon name was preceded by a falcon on a gold or north by west sign. The title may have represented the divine status of the king. The Horus associated with gold may be referring to the idea that the bodies of the deities were made of gold and the pyramids and obelisks are representations of sun rays. The gold sign may also be a reference to Nubd, the city of Set. This would suggest that the iconography represents Horus conquering Set. The prenomen and nomen were contained in a cartouche. The prenomen often followed the king of Upper and Lower Egypt or Lord of the Two Lands title. The prenomen often incorporated the name of Re. 
the nomen often followed the title son of Re or the title lord of appearances. Atef Hemum Keprish Physical Evidence Titles Nisu Bidi Name Horus Name Neti Name Golden Horus Nomen and Prenomen Notes Bibliography